So what does it mean for A to divide B? This is a very important definition for us. We're going to go over it today with examples. So let's get started. So what do I mean by A divides B? Well, what I really mean by that is that when I divide B by A, it divides very cleanly. Um, that we have no remainder when I divide by A. So how would I say that? So I can write that with this notation, A straight bar B, that means that reads as A divides B. If I can write B as A times K, where K is some integer. So I can write it, uh, the division is very clean. Uh, a is a factor of B. When I divide by A, there's no remainder. B is factored as A times something else. That's what we mean by divides. Now just to clarify, when I write A divides B, this is not an operation. I'm not saying divide B by A. I'm not saying that B over A is a fraction or anything like that. What I'm saying is a true or false statement. A divides B or it does not divide B. And that's it. Those are our options. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so here I have three. I want to show that A divides B. In this case, I want to show that three divides 18. That's pretty easy to say because I can write 18 as three times some integer, six. So there it is, three divides 18. Similarly, so I'll call this one two. Five divides negative 35. Am I sure about that? Yes, because negative 35 is 5 times something. So I have negative 35 is 5 times negative 7. 5 divides negative 35. And thirdly, we have a divides 0. That's true because 0 is a times 0. 0 is an integer, so a times an integer gives me 0, which means that a divides 0. Now, does 0 divide a? No, because I can't write a as 0 times something. So to show a, that 0 does not divide a, we use this notation. We use the divides line with the slash through it. So 0 does not divide a because you can't write a as 0 times some other integer. So we say it does not divide. I hope this makes sense. At first, this may look a little confusing, but you got to keep reading the definitions over and over again until they make sense. And that's partly why we do this in a course like Discrete Math is to get you more familiar with the communication of mathematics. Not just the concept, but this is a good concept to know. All right, so here's another example where this time uh, we want to determine if it's true or false that A divides B or not. So does 6 divide 426? So you may need to use a calculator for this, but that's okay. If I try to divide 6 into 426, I get 71. So that means here that 426 is 6 times 71. So does 6 divide 426? Yes. We can say 6 does, I'll say so, 6 does divide 426. I'll call that 1. Let's do 2 here. How about 86? So if I was going to do long division on 86 with 4, 4 goes in 8 two times, you bring down the 6, you get one more. And so down here I get a remainder. What this means is that I could write 86 as 4 times 21 plus 2. But that plus 2 means I have a remainder, so I cannot write 86 as 4 times something. So in this case, 4 does not divide 86. Now, later on when we get to the division algorithm, this statement will be useful to us, but for today, we need to say that 4 does not divide 86. We'll try one more. Negative 3, does that divide 19,224? I can look at it and say that negative 3 does divide this quickly. Um, even though I don't know the exact arithmetic, what I do know is here's a little trick. For threes, if I add up the digits, I should get a multiple of three. So let's see, one plus nine is 10, plus two is 12, 14. This adds up to 18. And so since three divides 18, three will also divide 19,224. So if three divides it, negative three divides it as well. Okay, now that's a little bit of a cheat, 
You can't do that in all cases, but for threes and nines, this does work. It's kind of a neat little number theory trick. Okay, now we've done a couple examples, hopefully getting your feet wet on what divides is, what it means. Um, what we're interested ultimately in is to prove statements involving divides. So I'm gonna practice an example of that. Now remember you have to use the definition of divides to do these successfully. Let's give it a shot. All right, so here's my proposition. I have three integers, A, B, and C. And I'm saying if A divides B and B divides C, okay, so that means A divide, the first integer divides the second one, the second one divides the third one, does that imply anything about the first and the third? And the answer is yes, A divides C. So we have some sort of transitive, we have a transitive property of divides. Now, how would we prove this? Well, all we're gonna do is apply the definition. To show that A divides C, I just have to write C as A times some sort of integer. And I think I can do that. I'll start off by just using what we know. We know that A divides B and B divides C. So I'll say, since A divides B and B divides C, by definition, well, the definition of divide says that I can write, in this case, b as a times some integer. So I'll say b is a k1. And similarly, I can do the same with b and c. c is b times k2, where k1 and k2 are integers. Now remember, I need to specify k1 and k2, or you could do j and k or something like that, but we just need to make clear that k1 and k2 are different integers. Okay, so now what I need to do here, if, if I'm thinking about like my scratch work, I need to take this expression and somehow get a involved. I need c equals a times maybe k3. That's what I need to get to, okay? But um, we have all the pieces in place to do this. So I'm gonna say that is c equals b k2, but b, remember, is a k1 times k2, and then I can use the associative property of multiplication to bring the k1 and k2 together, and then we will call that k3, because if I multiply two integers together, I get an integer. We'll say where k3 equals k1 times k2. So now look what I have. I have c equals a times some sort of integer. Actually, that's exactly what we were shooting for. So Thus, A divides C, and we can put our inner proof, transitive property of divides. Okay, we've looked at some examples on what does divide, what doesn't divide. We've done a proof, we've gone over the definition. Make sure you understand the definition well. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. I hope it's helpful. We'll see you later.